what is going on youtube it's your boy spanko and today i'm excited because i'm bringing you guys a deck that we haven't really done on the channel before and that's time lord it's a deck that's kind of like anti-meta and burn and control all in one and i'm going to explain that when we do get into the deck profile but if you guys enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel but we do a full 10 videos per week five long videos five short videos you guys are going to get a little bit of everything from deck profiles to dual videos to combo videos all that good stuff it's right here on the channel so make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all that also we're on the road to 10,000 subscribers i know we can make it happen with the spanko squad's help so i appreciate every single one of you guys who've supported me thus far and who are going to continue to support the channel i want this to be a community and i couldn't be here without you guys so i really appreciate every single one of you guys i don't want to keep this intro way too long though i'm way too heartfelt at this point but i hope you guys enjoyed today's video with that let's get into the deck profile so just before we get into today's deck profile, I do want to say that this is more or less a pure variant of Time Lord. And with this deck, you're always going to want to go second because funny enough, this is a control based deck, but it's one of the few that actually controls the game when it goes second and can set up some of its plays. All right. So you want to go second with this deck. Now let's get right into the deck profile. We are, of course, starting off with three Time Maiden. Time Maiden is one of the most important cards of your deck. First thing it lets you do is special summon itself onto the field when you control no monsters. It can be used as two tributes for the tribute of a Time Time Lord monster, which is really important because once it puts itself on the field, your Time Lord monsters in your hand can't actually be normal summoned. So it essentially lets you normal summon your Time Lord monsters by using itself. But the other thing you can do is activate its effect where you can tribute the card and add a Time Lord monster with zero attack from your deck to your hand, which is very powerful because it's a searcher for the deck. And then lastly, you can banish it from your graveyard to special summon a Time Lord monster with zero attack from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. So the really powerful thing about this is it essentially gets you to any Time Lord you need. And the first and second effects are not like you can use one and then you can't use the other you can use both in the same turn which is absolutely insane so you got to be playing three time maiden it's graveyard effect obviously to special summon another time lord is very very powerful then for the time lord monsters we're just maxing out on the best ones so we're playing three michion michion has the effect where at the end of the battle phase if this card battled you can half your opponent's life points and that's insane because the whole point of this deck and the way this deck is going to play out is essentially to control the game state and kind of be like a burn deck you just want to burn your opponent so you can end up winning the game that way so that's kind of like your win condition for the deck now before i go into the other time lords i kind of want to mention if you've never played time lords before they all have the same first effect where you cannot special summon this card from the deck but again time maiden lets you get around that which is really nice if you control no monsters you can normal summon this card without tributing i mentioned that when i was talking about time maiden as well essentially they're all level 10 monsters that can just be normal summon which is really nice you take no battle damage from attacks involving this card so if your opponent attacks into a zero attack monster that's fine it doesn't really do anything because you can't take battle damage from it anyways so that's the one effect that all of the time lord monsters share and another one that is the most important one in my opinion is the fact that these cards cannot be destroyed by battle or destroyed by card effect so that's kind of how the control aspect for time lords work is you're going to be summoning your big time lord they can't really be destroyed by battle or card effect so your opponent has to find a way to send it to the graveyard essentially so you can get around the destroy effect but the really cool thing with these is again it's just all the battle phase shenanigans right in the battle phase in this one you have your opponent's life points the other ones do other effects as well which is really nice right and then they all share the effect where during your standby phase you shuffle it back into the deck but that's actually really important because essentially it lets you summon another time lord from your hand which is really powerful all right so again, I explained Michion lets you half your opponent's life points. Raphion is the next best one here, where essentially at the end of the battle phase, if this card battles, you inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of one monster your opponent controls that battled this card. So if your opponent controls a monster with 3,000 attack, you attack into it. Neither of you guys take battle damage, but then at the end of the battle phase, your opponent takes 3,000 burn damage, which is absolutely insane. So you can imagine if you're starting to combo, again, it's not like one of those decks where you're going to burn your opponent all in one turn, but it's kind of like, okay, let's go Michion. Now I half your life points, you're at 4,000. Then I go Raphion, you attack for something like let's say at 2000 so now you're at 2000 and then if you have a way to summon a second body you can make stuff like your dread cannon gustav max which is insane because it's going to help you burn your opponent and then eventually go for game which is really nice right and also i'm going to talk about this extra deck here it's only nine cards i'll get into that when i get into the extra deck but uh yeah don't worry about that for now okay so raffion again lets you burn your opponent for attack equal to the attack of a monster that it attacks i said i'll attack a lot there but yeah these are all battle phase tricks okay and then we're playing three meta ion and meta ion Metion, Metion, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Meta Ion, I don't know. Metion though, this card is really good. If it battles, you return as many monsters on the field to the hand as possible, and then you inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each card returned, which is really, really nice. So again, it's just another burn effect for the deck, which is really cool. It 
helps you clear your opponent's board as well. And then we're playing two Sandion. Now Sandion is one that has 4,000 attack, unlike all the other ones with zero attack. So this one can't actually be summoned by Time Maiden, but it's fine. It's still a very powerful card on its own. Essentially, if it battles, you would get to inflict 2,000 damage to your opponent. So just another burn card. You guys can see how this can kind of start to add up and essentially you can start burning your opponent in two, three turns. And if they're not able to get over your Time Lords because they can't be destroyed by Battle of Card Effect, like I mentioned earlier, then it's kind of like one of those things where you're controlling the pace of the game, you end up burning your opponent, right? So Sandion is really good. Another 2,000 burn, which is really nice. Then we're playing one Zafion. Zafion at the end of the battle phase lets you shuffle all spells and traps your opponent controls back into the deck. So these are just kind of more utility in certain situations. When we're playing the one Gabrion, Gabrion is really nice because you can shuffle as many cards your opponent controls back into the deck, but then they have to draw the number of cards equal to that they're shuffled. So this card is one of those ones where it's really good to use as Ixie's material. It's not necessarily one you want to start your combos with, but it's just another name for you, which is really powerful. And then we're playing the one Camion. Camion is at the end of the battle phase. You can shuffle one card your opponent controls back into the deck, and then you inflict 500 damage to your opponent. So it's just another burn one, but again, it's not as good as the Raphael burn or the Michion half your opponent's life points or the Metion 300 burn for each card shuffled, right? So these ones are like kind of situational. They're not as good. I think Gabrion, I would say, is kind of like the worst one. Zephion, again, against back row decks is really powerful. So that's why you need to be playing the one. But that's it for the Time Lord monsters. These are all the ones you need. And then you guys are going to be playing some of the Time Lord traps. Now, before we get into the traps, you guys might be wondering, oh, but Spanko, you said you want to go second. Why are you playing trap cards? Because trap cards aren't as good going second. That is true. However, again, with this deck, it's not one of those decks that wants to go second on OTK. It wants to go second and then control the pace of the game, right? So to do that, we're playing three of the Empty Machine, one of the most important cards in this deck. Empty Machine essentially lets you once per turn either discard a level 10 monster to draw a card or the other effect, which is really nice, is you can shuffle a Time Lord monster that's in your graveyard back into the deck and then you can set an Infinity Machine directly from your hand or deck. Now, Infinity Machine has another really cool effect, which is why we're just playing the one. Keep in mind with Infinity Machine and Infinite Light, by the way, you just want to play one ofs because you don't want to draw them. You really want to get them out of your deck with something like Empty Machine, right? So let's get into Infinite Machine now. Infinite Machine has the effect where during your main phase, you can special summon a Time Lord monster from your hand. This is really good because if you normal summon a Time Lord, you can activate the Infinite Machine to special summon another Time Lord. And this way you have two on the field. You do your battle phase shenanigans. You can go into rank 10, etc., etc. So Infinite Machine is really good in that sense. And then it has another effect where you can target a Time Lord monster in your graveyard, shuffle it into the deck, and then you can set an Infinite Light. Now, Infinite Light is an absolutely insane card. This card, once per turn, you, if you control no monsters, you can special summon up to one Time Lord monster from each, your hand, your deck, and your graveyard ignoring its summoning condition. So you get to summon three Time Lords with infinite light just by activating this card. And again, it's one of those things that it does require setup, but once you set it up, it's absolutely insane. Also, the really cool thing about these traps is they all kind of share the same effect where if they would be destroyed, they can't be destroyed by card effect, essentially. Empty Machine, it's just the first time it would be destroyed, it protects itself. Infinite Machine, as well as Infinite Light, both just can't be destroyed, which is really nice. So that's it's really nice that these cards kind of have their own protection built in. And that's it for the Time Lord cards, all right? So that's the monsters and that's the traps. That's the important Time Lord stuff. Then we're playing some consistency pieces. We're playing three Pot of Prosperity. And yes, I understand you guys might be thinking, oh, but Pot of Prosperity, you can't burn your opponent or your opponent's burn is going to be half. Yes, that's true. You guys can definitely play Extravagance here instead of Prosperity. Extravagance is also a more budget option. But the main reason I'm not playing Extravagance and I chose to play Prosperity is because with Extravagance, you do run the risk a lot more to draw into these cards. Whereas with Prosperity, you get to choose the card that you add. So a lot of the times if you're missing like a Time Lord name or if you're missing another extended which I'll get into the extenders in a moment here, it kind of gets you to that card, which is really nice. Whereas Extravagance, if I draw two and I draw these, it can be kind of difficult to play. So that's kind of why I'm not playing Extravagance. But again, you definitely can play Extravagance. You have a lot of extra deck room. So if you guys want to do that, you guys can do that as well. But keep in mind, Michion as well, I will say, it doesn't actually burn your opponent for half their life points. It just says half your opponent's life points. So with Prosperity, it actually says the damage your opponent takes is half. This is actually not damage, which is really nice. Okay, so that's just something that you guys can know. It's kind of one of those synergies that kind of works out pretty well. And then we're playing three Celestial Transformation. This card essentially says special summon a fairy monster from your hand. And then its attack is halved. Again, most of your Time Lords are zero attack anyway, so that's not a big deal. And then it's destroyed at the end phase. But again, the really cool thing about this card and why it synergizes so well is because a lot of these Time Lord monsters cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect, which means that if you summon a Time Lord with your Celestial Transformation at the end phase, it's actually not going to be destroyed. So this card is pretty much just insane for the deck. It's just a free summon, which is absolutely crazy. So that's why we're playing three of. We're playing the one, one for one, of course 
Curse because we want to get to our Time Maiden as fast as possible. We're playing one Foolish Burial because we want to send a Time Maiden as fast as possible. This card is absolutely insane, both on the field and in the graveyard. So one for one and Foolish Burial help you get it onto your field and into the graveyard as fast as possible. We're playing one Monster Reborn, just another extender, which is really nice because like Celestial Transformation, the really cool thing about Monster Reborn is if you're getting more bodies on your side of the field, you have more access to your extra deck and your extra deck can help you win games as well, right? So that's why I'm playing the one Monster Reborn. And then lastly, you are still going second. You are still having to compete with today's metagame. So I'm just playing the best three hand traps into today's metagame. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of good hand traps in today's metagame, but I think these are just the most generic ones. So I'm playing three Ash Blossom, three Nibiru, and three Imperm. I think these are just the most important ones in today's format. Now again, when you build a side deck, I'm not showing you guys a side deck here, but when you build a side deck, depending on different matchups, you guys can obviously build your side deck so that if Nibiru is not good into a certain matchup, you take out the Nibs, you put in the other cards kind of thing, right? So that's what the really nice thing about this deck where it's very consistent on its own just with the prosperity with the celestial transformation all the time lords the maidens really nice but then the really cool thing is that you have a lot of cards that you can side in and out without actually having to experience any problems with consistency in the deck right so that's why i really like this deck i think it's really cool it's, it's a really different way to play Yu-Gi-Oh, which is nice so that's it for the main deck it's 40 cards right here on the main deck now let's move into the extra deck over here we're playing three of the super dreadnought rail cannon gustav max gustav max of course being a rank 10 monster you can make it with any two time lords which is not very hard to do especially with your time maiden and with your celestial transformation so it's not very hard to do that and then you're going to be burning your opponent for 2000 again sometimes this is just a win condition for you we're playing the two dora dora is a big beat stick for you as well that can protect itself and it just becomes one of those things where if your opponent can't out this then you're going to be able to win a lot of games libe is a really powerful card as well because it can actually help you otk and again just an otk option in this deck is really cool because again this deck is all based off its battle phase tricks but sometimes you're not going to be able to win always in the battle phase using just the time lord monsters so if you see situation where you can make a super dreadnought gustav max activate the gustav max effect burn your opponent for 2000 then make libe and then you can try to go for a game that way so libe is another really good option for you and then we're playing two zeus here because again you're just playing a bunch of axes monsters and zeus is just one of the best axes monsters in these situations right so that's it for the extra deck and it's only nine cards so you still have six cards to play with and the reason i'm only showing you the nine is because these are the only nine you need now in theory you can max out on these if you want just because if you don't want to lose against a cost matchup but again playing two of each is perfectly fine against Kostura. this is the only one that i would play three because sometimes you can make this multiple times in a duel but that's really it like there's nothing else in the extra deck that you actually need need right so now with the other six cards i'm gonna give you guys some options there's a few more rank 10s that you guys can play but they never really come up you guys can play some link monsters if you see fit but truthfully i think you can just play super poly targets and this is a really cool thing about this deck again like i said you don't have to just play prosperity you can play extravagance as well because you have six slots here that you can just do whatever you want with and again if you want to play super poly in your side deck and you feel like super poly is relevant then you can play a bunch of super poly targets and then you have kind of good matchups against certain decks right and now against kashtara super poly may not be the best card so the really cool thing is if you go against kashtara you activate prosperity you just get rid of the six fusion monsters anyway because you're not going to use them right you're not going to side them in regardless so that's a really cool thing about this deck so again you guys can play around with the extra deck how you want but uh these are the only cards you need i wouldn't switch these up at all the rest of the six whatever you guys want now again this is definitely a rogue based deck this is definitely not a meta deck however if you wanted to play it as competitively possible i highly recommend you try this build out so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that is my take on time lord for this april 2023 format this deck of course is going to be a rogue deck it's not like a super meta deck however it is one of those anti-meta decks that if you guys want to play at a casual level can be very very fun and a lot of the times your opponent won't really have outs to a lot of the cards you're putting up keep in mind all these time lords can be destroyed by battle can be destroyed by card effects and that makes it very difficult for your opponent to out now if you guys did enjoy today's deck profile make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu -Gi -Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel but we do a full 10 videos per week five long videos five short videos you guys are going to get a little bit of everything so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video thank you guys all i appreciate every single one of you guys for watching we're on the road to 10,000. i know we can make it happen so thank you guys and with that thank you signing out peace